What's going on guys? Long time no see. Wow, I hope you guys are all doing well. This is a video that I'm sure you guys have wanted to see for quite some time. Remember uh, maybe about six months or so back where I unboxed some awesome hardware all on the X99 platform. I got the X99 UD4 motherboard from Gigabyte, a 6 core, which is a huge upgrade from my old quad core, uh, Intel Core i7-5820K, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, and something that I'm sure a lot of you guys don't even know about because I didn't get the chance to unbox it, a 4 gigabyte AMD Radeon R9 290X graphics card. Now I've had that system up and running secretly, you know, off camera over on a test bench over here for the last couple of months and it wasn't until recently that I finally decided to go for a new case because I did have the Corsair 600T which that case just was not quite big enough for the things that I want to do with this new machine. So I went out and got the Corsair 750D computer case, the full tower case but physically not too much bigger than the 600T but where the difference is is on the inside and there's just so much more space there especially because I also have a uh, Corsair H105 liquid cooler which is a very thick radiator and just would not work in the 600T. So naturally I figured what better way to come back after about a six month break or so from YouTube than me building a system in that new case with all that new hardware which is going to be my primary machine for what I hope for the next five years or so. Now really quick uh, before we get into the video here because I know you guys just want to skip this intro, um, really quick about the 290X uh, video card GPU. Uh, it does work in OS 10. I'm actually running it right now with all three monitors. However, it really is not officially supported and until recently it was not working at all with anything more than one monitor which for me it's a big deal, it's kind of a deal breaker. One of the other slightly smaller reasons that I put this video off for so long, it wasn't until recently that I was Googling around and came across something on insanelymac.com, so go ahead and check out that website. Tons of great information over there. And um, there's actually like a little hot swap sort of a thing that you can do with your displays. What you do is you boot the computer up with one monitor plugged in, put the computer to sleep. While it's sleeping, plug the other two monitors in, wake it back up and boom, you have three displays. Whereas if you just try to boot the computer up from you know a normal cold boot or a restart or whatever have you with all three or even two plugged in, all your monitors are just black. There's some frame buffer issues. People are trying to mess around with the AMD 8000 series uh, kernel extension within OS 10. Uh, right now, there is just really no official support from Apple on this GPU yet. So uh, before you guys just run out and get a 290X, uh, watch this video first, do some research, and if you guys really want, uh, go ahead and leave a comment down below. If you want me to make a video just about the 290X and that issue in OS 10, then I'll go ahead and do that. So with that out of the way, I know you guys just want to get right into the build, so let's do it. To start off, let's take a quick look at the case. The 750D is a great choice for this build because while being a full tower case, it's not too much bigger than the old 600T mid tower case I used to have, at least on the outside. The inside's a different story, but more on that in a minute. Up front we have line in and out, a reset switch, a nice big power button, two USB 3.0, and two USB 2.0 ports. The bottom of the front panel pops open to reveal two pre-installed 140mm fans which I'll be replacing in this video. And in front of those fans, a nice little dust guard. Now the side panel is my favorite view of this case. The 750D offers a huge amount of transparency to show off all those fancy hardware components all while keeping a nice professional clean look. The panel comes off with two little thumb screws in the back and separates very easily from the rest of the case. Now here's the hardware that will be going inside this 750D. This machine is quite the upgrade from my old Hackintosh which I used for just shy of 5 years. That said, I'm expecting this machine to last me another 5 years, of course not including the occasional upgrade. I'm using the X99 UD4 motherboard from Gigabyte, which has been equipped with the 6 core Intel Core i7-5820K processor. 16 gigabytes of DDR4 2133 megahertz crucial memory. Although both a 2 gigabyte Nvidia GTX 760 and a 4 gigabyte AMD Radeon R9 290X graphics cards are seen here, I actually only ended up using the 290X as I found the aforementioned workaround for using three displays in OS 10 with the 290X. This is great as I will no longer be bottlenecked to PCIe by 8 speeds, a limitation of the 5820K processor with more than one GPU. With only using the 290X, I can now utilize all 16 PCI lanes on the 290X, which will increase performance in both OS X and in Windows. 
There's a total of 7.62 terabytes in this system, most of which is for storage of music, movies, and video projects, while the rest is for my operating systems. The 3 terabyte is exclusively for time machine backups to be sure that the rest of my other drives are safe. Since I don't include roughly 1.5 terabytes in my time machine backups, it comes out just about right. Also in the system are two PCI cards, one Ethernet, and one Wi-Fi card. Both of these cards work out of the box in Yosemite, making my experience even easier. For cooling, I'll be replacing all of the fans in this case with Corsair SP120s. These 120mm fans are ridiculously quiet and offer great cooling ability. Not to mention, I think they have an awesome look to them. Last but not least, powering all this hardware is a relatively old Corsair 750 watt power supply. Believe it or not, I'll even have some headroom for future upgrades, seeing as it ran both my GPUs just fine. And with that, we're ready to get into the build. First, I'm going to remove the left hard drive cage. Not only for you guys to be able to see the inside of the case a little better, but also because I plan on having it stacked in the front by the intake fans anyway. With that cage out of there, I'm now going to install the rear panel I.O. All you need to do to install the rear I.O. shield is to fit it into the rectangle cutout at the back of the case, then push it into place until you hear it snap in. Next, I'm going to mount the motherboard. Notice that in the 750D, Corsair has pre-installed the standoffs and labeled them accordingly. I'll need to secure the motherboard everywhere that's marked with an A for ATX. One thing to note here is that I've had the system up and running for a few months on my test bench, which is why the cooler is already applied to the motherboard. While I normally apply both the CPU and the cooler while the motherboard's already inside the case, I didn't want to separate the cooler from the CPU as it's already cooling like a beast. For this build, I'll be going with a top mounted radiator setup. So you can see me putting the radiator at the top where it will be so that it's out of the way while I'm securing the motherboard down. It's also very important to reduce the amount of stress or tension on the cooling tubes at all times while installing. Using the included screws, now we're going to go ahead and secure that motherboard down. The process of securing the motherboard down is as easy as using a screwdriver to tighten the screws wherever necessary. A total of 8 screws were needed in my particular build. With the motherboard now in place, I'm going to plug in my rear I.O. shield. As weird as that sounds, the X99 UD4 actually features an LED backplate, which is great for plugging in cables under a desk or at night. Next on the agenda is to secure that radiator from the Corsair H105 cooler to the top of the case. First, let's go ahead and get that magnetic dust guard off the top. For this, I'll be using another 8 screws to secure the radiator to the top of the case, which I will then mount my fans to. Personally, I've found this method to be more effective across the systems that I've built, however, if you have another suggestion for cooling, feel free to let me know in the comments. Before putting the fans on the radiator, I'm going to install the power supply next for one main reason which I'll get to in just one second. After lining up and securing the unit at the bottom of the 750D, I would like to run one cable in particular, the CPU power connector. I've learned from experience that since this connector is typically at the very top left of the motherboard, it can be nearly impossible to install once the fans have been mounted to the radiator. After pulling the cable through the bottom grommet of the case, I will bring it up the backside and through the hole at the top of the case. Connecting this cable is now much easier than it would be if that fan was there. Remember this for the next time you build your system. With the CPU power cable plugged in, we can now add the fans to the radiator. The easiest way I've found to do this is to put a screw through the fan before holding the fan to the radiator. Since this is a dual radiator, I'm obviously going to be mounting two fans up top here. After screwing the fans into place, we now have to plug the fans into the motherboard. Since the fan power connectors aren't too long and there's no power headers at the top of the motherboard, cable management won't be the best right now, at least until I can get some extenders. That said, I decided to hide the cable between the memory slots and the CPU block, which actually works out pretty well since both the cable and the motherboard are black. As you can see, there's two power connectors by the lower right hand corner of the CPU socket, one of which is occupied by the cooler's pump and the other by the right fan. Time to plug in the left fan. The power connector I have in mind is by the leftmost memory slot. This time, I'll be using the rear fan and the rear I.O. to hide the cable as much as possible. And while we're at it, I'm also going to be replacing the rear fan with a Corsair SP120. Not only for the color scheme, but also because I find that stock Corsair fans are just too loud for my liking. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. Since we're already working on fans, let's go ahead and mount the intake fans on the front of the case. Once again, I will be removing the noisy, stock 140mm Corsair fans and instead replacing them with SP120s. I realize that the airflow here won't be all that great since the front is a solid panel aside from a little area around the panel, however I feel that enough air is being circulated through the system and I have yet to notice any temperatures above where I'd like them. 
After removing the stock fans, I noticed that I won't be able to mount these 120mm fans directly on top of each other as I had originally planned, as the holes just don't line up. Instead, what I decided to do is to split the fans up, one up top and one on the bottom of the front panel. Since I want my hard drives to receive as much air as possible, I decided to follow suit with my hard drive mounts. More on that in a few minutes. Following the exact same procedure as all the others, all four corners are secured into the case in the position that I would like them. Next, I'm going to get my PCI devices installed. I'm going to start from the bottom and work upwards, meaning that my Ethernet card will be going in first. This little PCI 1X card has worked out of the box in OS X for years now, which means that nowadays even on Yosemite, I don't have to worry about getting my onboard NIC working, unless of course I really wanted to. Next up is my NVIDIA GTX 760. As a reminder, although the GTX 760 graphics card will be installed in this video, I'm actually editing this video using only the 290X and I'm loving every minute of it. Keeping in mind that rear fan's power cable and making sure that the card is actually installed over it, the 760 goes right into place without a fight. Next is the Wi-Fi card. This is the TP-Link TLWDN4800 wireless card that's oh so popular in the Hackintosh world because it works right out of the box. I really don't intend on using Wi-Fi too much in this build, but it can't hurt to have it, right? And last but certainly not least for the PCI devices is the R9-290X. This card's 4GB of video memory will drastically help with my editing process, and since I use a Final Cut workflow rather than an Adobe one, I wasn't really getting any benefit from the CUDA cores on my 760. One thing to note about this card is that you guys will definitely want to check out my blog post over at Roach Technology for important information regarding using the 290X with multiple displays in OS X. And just like that, all of my PCI devices have been installed into the system. The 750D allows me to suspend one of the hard drive bays from the bottom of the 5 and a quarter inch bays. While hard drives are reasonably heavy, the way that these cages slide into metal tracks has me feeling very confident that my hard drives won't ever come crashing down one day. After putting all of my hard drives into their trays, they're ready to be installed into the system. The toolless mechanism is nothing new to Corsair cases and is something that works very well. With all of my hard drives finding their way into their new homes, my Intel solid state drive has a separate home on the back of the case. On the back of the 750D are these handy 2.5 inch drive holders which are perfect for tucking away those SSDs. The tools design of these drive bays once again makes putting a drive in them a breeze. At this point it becomes clear to me that my only struggle is going to be the amount of cables and wires back behind these drives as I have a total of 6 installed. The fun begins as I get my first SATA power cable line routed out the back for installation. I don't know who designed these power connectors to alternate forcing you to twist and bend the rest of the cable out of the way. I don't know about you guys, but I really wish they would move on from this design. All of my drives now have power and are only needing the SATA connection. After plugging all of the SATA cables into the motherboard, they also need to be routed back behind the case and plugged into the hard drives. A good strategy that I use is to try to use different cables for different types of drives. For example, as you can see here, I have a different textured SATA cable for my solid state drive so that in case I need to unplug it for whatever reason, it will be easier for me to do so. There is no rocket science involved in plugging in a SATA cable, however in my particular build, this definitely resulted in some spaghetti in the back of my case. None of which however will be noticeable from the transparent side panel. I won't bore you guys with a few remaining minor things like front USB ports, power switch, activity light wires, and other similar things, and so basically just after a little more work, this machine is together and it's ready to rock for the next 5 years. At least that's the plan. I would eventually love to get some memory that actually complements the color scheme as well as 32 or 64 gigabytes of it rather than the 16 that I currently have. I'm also going to look into getting a modular power supply because I know there's going to be comments about that and I will do that assuming I come across the right deal. After a quick goodbye to the spaghetti, the clean side panel is back on and of course followed by the transparent one. I have to say again how much I'm loving the 750D. The inside of this case has tons of room to work on top of its modern professional look. Be sure to let me know what you guys think of my new build and also what other content you'd like to see about it down below in the comments. I'm at CPU Kid on Twitter. Also, be sure to check out RoachTechnology.com, and I hope to see you guys back here very soon for a lot more content.